What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Learn Japanese from Some Guy. Uh, excuse me. Today, we're going to be looking at the third and final part of my little mini series on how to make comparisons in Japanese. So, uh, in part one, we looked at using yori. In part two, we learned how to use hodo. And now, in part three, we're going to learn how to use no ho ga. So, um, if you haven't seen part one and part two, please be sure to watch those because at the end of this video, we're going to do some practice problems that involve using what we learned in part one, what we learned in part two, and what we're going to learn today. So we're going to put everything, you know, culminate everything we've learned and, and you know, test ourselves and our knowledge. So, uh, you know, review a little bit or just watch them for the first time if you haven't already. But if you have seen them, then uh, we can, we're good to go and we can get, get started. So uh, the structure that we're going to practice using today is going to look something like this. We'll have object one, yori mo, object two, no ho ga, adjective des. So uh, as you can see, the structure looks a little bit longer and appears to be a little more complicated than what we've learned with yori and hodo, but it's really more straightforward, really easy. So uh, we'll break it down a little bit. And also I should, I should point out now that the mo in yori mo is optional. So we can say object one, yori, Object two no ho ga, or you can say object one yori mo, object two no ho ga. Either one is fine. You know, I think yori mo would be more more polite, but it's optional. So sometimes you'll see sentences with it, and sometimes you'll see sentences without it. But um, anyway, the first thing that we're going to talk about is that we actually don't need this object one yori mo part uh, to compare things. So um, if we can understand through context what we're comparing, then we don't need it. So for example, we can see here, we have kare sega takai. So we can look at these two people, I don't know, this uh, husband and wife, for example, and we're comparing their height. So we can just say kare no ho ga sega takai desu. So he is taller, yes, he is taller than her. So just like in English, we don't need to use the than part if what we are comparing is just understood by, you know, context or it's obvious, right? Kare no ho ga sega takai desu. We can say he is taller than her, but we can just say he is taller. Or if we have, for example, cookie no ho ga oishi desu. So cookies taste better. Mm, cookies are more delicious than goya. So we don't actually need this than goya part, but we can include it, you know, if we if we want to. So uh, that Japanese works the exact same way. So you know, it's obvious in this picture we're talking about you know his height versus her height, or the deliciousness of cookies versus this. Uh, vegetable, so we don't need to include that part. But for the sake of clarity, sometimes we will want to include this object one yori mo part, and that's what we're going to look at in the following example sentences, just so you guys get the whole uh, idea of how it works. As you get more comfortable using this expression or this structure, rather, then you can leave it out, you know, however, whenever you want. But just so we learn it, we're going to we're going to practice using it. So uh, if we want to include object one yori mo in our sentences, then the above sentences would look something like this. So we have kanojo kare sega takai. So we want to say he is taller than her. So we could say kanojo yori kare no ho ga sega takai desu. Kanojo yori mo kare no ho ga sega takai desu. So compared with her, kanojo yori mo kare no ho ga sega takai desu. He is taller. So this is kind of a more literal translation, but you can just simply say he is taller than her. And the second sentence would look something like this. Goya yori mo cookie no ho ga oishi desu. So compared with bitter melon, goya, cookie no ho ga oishi desu. So cookie no ho is like pointing to the cookies. This, this character means like direction, ho. So cookie no ho. So it's like this cookie no ho, this, this side, not this side. Cookie no ho ga oishi. So compared to bitter, bitter melon, cookies taste better. Or a more natural English translation would just be cookies taste better than bitter melon or better than goya. And also, it's worth noting that uh, you know this might be a little more advanced, or you know don't don't confuse yourself with this. But we can switch the objects around. So if you wanted to say object two no ho ga, object one yori mo, adjective, that's perfectly fine. So if you want to start with object two, that's cool. You can say kare no ho ga kanojo yori mo sega takai, or cookie no ho ga. Goya yori mo oishi desu, or whatever. So you can say, Kanojo yori mo kare no ho ga sega takai. Or, Kare no ho ga kanojo yori mo sega takai desu, whatever. So, however you, you want to do it, 
both both are perfectly fine. So now we're going to look at some more example sentences, just like part one and part two. The, the sentence, the meaning for the sentences are going to be the exact same, but the way we structure the sentence is going to be different. So, uh, number one, we have, Imoto yori watashi no ho ga yasashi desu. Imoto yori watashi no ho ga yasashi desu. So, compared with my younger sister, I am nicer. Or, I am nicer than my younger sister. It would be a more natural translation. Imoto yori watashi no ho ga yasashi. I am nicer than my younger sister. Number two, kino yori mo kyo no ho ga atsui desu. Kino yori mo kyo no ho ga atsui desu. So today is hotter than yesterday. And remember, we can't switch. We could say kyo no ho ga kino yori mo atsui, atsui desu. You can switch the objects around however you want to do it. Uh, let's see number three, sono kutsu yori kono kutsu no ho ga yasui desu. Sono kutsu yori Kono kutsu no hou ga yasui desu. So these shoes are cheaper than those shoes. Number four, kame san yori usagi san no hou ga hayai desu. Kame san yori usagi san no hou ga hayai desu. So the hair is faster than the tortoise. Number five, roku yori mo hachi no hou ga ookii desu. Roku yori mo hachi no hou ga Oki desu. So eight is greater, eight is bigger than six. So hachi no ho ga oki. Number six. Hachi yori mo roku no ho ga chisai desu. Hachi yori mo roku no ho ga chisai desu. So six is less than eight. Six is not as big. Six is smaller than eight. Number seven. Tokyo yori nagasaki no ho ga anzen desu. Tokyo yori Nagasaki no ho ga anzen desu. So Nagasaki is safer than Tokyo. Remember, you could switch the objects around. Nagasaki no ho ga Tokyo yori mo anzen desu. Whichever one. Number eight. Watashi yori mo anata no ho ga jōzu desu. Watashi yori mo anata no ho ga jōzu desu. So you are better, you are more skillful than me. So remember, if you want to go back and look at the example sentences we saw in part one and part two, you can compare... The meaning is going to be the exact same, but how we structure the sentence is different. That, that's all. So um, you can go back and review. But uh, if you are ready to look at the practice problems, then we can we can do that. So using the three methods methods that we have learned to compare things, uh, yori, hodo, and no ho ga, we're going to compare the the pic use the pictures and compare them using all three structures. So we have object one, object two, yori mo, adjective. Object one, object two, hodo. Nai, nai adjective. And what we learned today, object one, yori mo, object two, no ho ga, adjective. So uh, we have an example to illustrate what I'm what I'm trying to say. So we have the akai boru, midori iro no boru, chisai. So we can see, excuse me, that the uh, green ball is smaller than the red ball. So we could say, midori iro no boru wa akai boru yori. Chisai desu. So the green ball is smaller than the red ball. Or, akai boru, akai boru wa midori iro no boru hodo chisaku nai desu. The red ball is not as small as the green ball. So we have hodo. And what we just learned today, akai boru yori midori iro no boru no ho ga chisai desu. So what we learned today, no ho ga yori hodo. And no ho ga. So we're going to use all three methods that we have practiced. So uh, this is not easy. So if you find it difficult, just review. But uh, we'll go over them together. All right. So number one, we have akai pen, aoi pen, nagai. So we can see here that the red pen is not as long as the blue pen, or that the blue pen is longer than the red pen. So if we wanted to use yori, we could say mm, aoi pen wa. Akai pen yori nagai desu. Well, aoi, a, aoi pen wa akai pen yori nagai desu. So the blue pen is longer than the red pen. Now, if we wanted to say that the red pen is not as long as the blue pen, we could use hodo. So we could say akai pen wa aoi pen hodo nagaku nai desu. Right? Akai pen wa 
aoi pen hodo nagaku nai desu. So the red pen is not as long as the blue pen. And if we wanted to use no ho ga, we could say, mm, akai pen yori aoi pen no ho ga nagai desu. Akai pen yori aoi pen no ho ga nagai desu. So compared with the red pen, the blue pen is longer. The blue pen is longer than the red pen. And now let's look at number two. So we have lingo, lemon, spice. So we have apple, lemon, and sour. So uh, let's see. The lemon is more sour than the apple. So we could say, using yori, we could say, lemon wa lingo yori spai desu. So lemon wa lingo yori spai desu. So the lemon is more sour than the apple. If we wanted to say the apple is not as sour as the lemon, we could use so how could we say that? The apple is not as sour as the lemon. We could say lingo wa. Usually you have it in katakana, it's easier. Lingo wa lemon hodo spai supaku nai. Supaku nai desu. Supaku nai desu. Lingo wa lemon hodo supaku nai desu. So the lemon is not, or the apple is not as sour as the lemon. And if we wanted to use no ho ga, we could say the lemon is more sour than the apple. So you say, uh, lingo yori mo lem lemon no ho ga spai desu. Or we could say, uh, lemon no ho ga lingo yori spai desu. Whatever. So this is what we learned today. And let's see number three. Let's see Japan, America, and big. So of course we all know that. Uh, land mass wise, America is bigger than Japan. So we have Nihon, America, and Hiroi. So it's also, you know, I should point out here that we don't use oki to describe, you know, like the bigness of a country or the bigness of a room. We'd want to use Hiroi, which means wide. So technically or literally what we're saying is, you know, America is wider than uh, Japan. But uh, so we use the adjective Hiroi. Uh, anyway, so uh, let's see. Obviously, America is bigger than Japan, so using yori, we could say, America wa Nihon yori hiroi desu. America is bigger than Japan. Now, if we wanted to say that Japan is not as big as America, what could we say using hodo? We could say, Nihon wa America hodo. Uh, hiroku nai desu. Hiroku nai desu. And if we wanted to use no ho ga, we could say obviously J America is bigger than bigger than Japan. So America no ho ga Nihon yori hiroi desu. Or Nihon yori mo Nihon yori America no ho ga hiroi. America no ho ga hiroi desu. Uh, number four, we have orange juice. Kohi and nigai, bitter. So obviously coffee is more bitter than orange juice. Uh, so let's see, using yori, we could say, uh, Kohi wa orange juice yori nigai desu. I hate, I hate typing in, in katakana. Kohi wa orange juice yori nigai desu. So coffee is more bitter than orange juice. And if we wanted to say orange juice is not as bitter as coffee, we would have to use hodo. So we could say orange juice wa ko kohi hodo nigaku nai desu. Nigaku nai desu. Orange juice wa kohi hodo nigaku nai desu. So not as, orange juice is not as bitter as coffee, hopefully. And uh, let's see, now we want to use no ho ga. So, coffee is more bitter than orange juice. So, uh, let's see, orange juice yori mo uh, kohi no ho ga nigai desu. Or you could say, kohi no ho ga orange juice yori mo nigai desu. Or, orange juice yori mo. Kohi no ho ga nigai desu. So coffee is more bitter than orange juice. And that's it. So I know this probably was not the easiest exercise in the world, but I think it's a really, really good uh, practice and a really, really good demonstration of how we can use multiple structures to basically say the exact same thing. So um, 
you know, just like in, if you're if you're confused, you think, why do you have so many ways? You know, obviously in English, we have the exact same thing. You know, the red pen is longer than the blue pen. The blue pen is not as long as the red pen compared to the blue pen. The red pen is shorter or, or whatever. So um, I don't know when you would use one over the other. If there's any kind of you know, for stress or for emphasis, uh, you can just say whichever one, you know, you feel is right. And of course, maybe if you want to emphasize one object over the other, you can use, you know, hodo, you know, akai pen wa aoi pen hodo nakakunai or whatever for, for emphasis. Um, you know, you might want to consult with a Japanese you know, person who could give you more uh, details about that. But they're basically the essentially the exact same, right? So anyway, that does it for this little series on using yori, hodo, and no ho ga. So if you have looked at chapter part one and part two, and if you can remember and learn what we looked at today, then you will be able to compare just about you know anything in, in Japanese, you know, any in, in the different number of ways. So I think it's always important when you're studying a language to know how how to say something multiple ways, not just one way. Because I think when your brain starts, you know, thinking about the same structure, the same idea, but from different, you know, perspectives, then it really kind of helps, you know, expand your your ability to use that language. So it's a very, very important skill. You know, don't just use yori or don't just use hodo or don't just use no ho ga. You know, use all three of them, all right? Learn them all in conjunction and it will be easier. I, I assure you. But anyway, uh, we'll recap really quickly what we learned in this, this chapter. Uh, very short, we learned that there are three common structures used to compare objects, yori, hodo, and no ho ga. We can include mo in yori mo, and, or the mo rather, and yori mo is optional. And when using hodo, we want to use the negative form of our adjective. You know, he is not as tall as her. She is not as old as me or whatever. So just like in English, we use not. So that's with hodo, it's the exact same. Anyway, next we'll look at next week, we'll look at chapter 48 and we'll talk about how we can try things. So what this means is, you know, you might want to say, I'm going to give that book a read, you know, yonde miru. Uh, I'm going to, you know, watch that movie, mite miru. So we use te miru to express this, this feeling of doing something not so seriously. I'll just give it a try to, to do something and see how it works out. So a very, very casual expression, but something you can definitely use every day. Very, very useful Japanese. So uh, be sure to check that out next week. And as always, thanks for watching, subscribing, telling a friend. Uh, this video is getting a little long, so uh, I can't plug or promote myself as much as I would like to normally. But uh, tell a friend, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.